Cataractcoach.com quiz. What is different about this white cataract? Look carefully at the picture. The answer's there. So we're starting off staining the anterior lens capsule with tri-pen blue dye. And now we'll put in our viscoelastic. This is a dispersive viscoelastic. Get the air bubbles out of the eye, get a nice fill of the anterior chamber. And normally in an intumescent white cataract, we would do the technique of the double rexus or some other way to decompress and alleviate the pressure from the capsular bag. And we do that before making the main incision. So why am I making the main incision now? Well, because this case is very different. Watch carefully. I'll put the forceps in the eye. That's measuring out my ideal five millimeter axis. And when I poke down on the anterior lens capsule, it sinks, it sinks inward. This is not a bulging forward anterior lens capsule. This is the opposite, it's concave. As I push on the lens capsule, it depresses. The pressure in the capture bag is zero. There is no pressure in it. That's an unusual thing for an intumescent white cataract. So we'll complete our capsular axis. Now I'll give you a hint here. We definitely want to have an intact, round, and centered 5 millimeter capsular axis. It's a very important part of this case in order to have secure IOL positioning. Watch carefully, finishing the rexus, and then we'll measure it with the forceps. And as you know, my forceps, the first mark is two and a half millimeters on the tip, and the second mark is five millimeters. So when we measure it, there it is, exactly five millimeters. That looks great. Now there's no need for hydro dissection. We're not gonna do that at all. In fact, look what happens when I just put the phaco probe in the eye, just infusion, infusion pressure, Look how deep things get, and we try to aspirate any of the lens material. <gasps> Look at that. What's that? Posterior capsule is wide open. Look at the pre op picture again now. Intumescent white cataract, and you can see the slit lamp if we dim the illumination, that in fact it's pushed inwards. It's not pressurized. And look at the A scan. In that red circle, you can see the posterior capsule is open, and there's lens material leaking into the vitreous cavity. And this is a patient who already had a pars plane of vitrectomy and a scleral buckle for a retinal detachment. And this was a complicated surgery. And the patient sustained a posterior capsule defect during that procedure. And we knew about this ahead of time. So now, about a month or so after the initial cataract, uh, vitrectomy surgery, we're doing the cataract. So since the patient's already had a full vitrectomy, we don't need to worry about prolapsed vitreous here. We're just going to use the IA probe and clean up the anterior lens capsule and the capsular bag, and we'll see the defect in the poster capsule, which is quite significant. So in all likelihood, this patient had a very small weakness or defect in the poster capsule, and as the lens material became swollen and engorged, it exerted some pressure, extended the posterior capsule opening, and then as a result, this patient has a complete white cataract, but then again, lens material leaking into the vitreous cavity. And so cleaning up our anterior segment, what we'll do is I'll put the IOL in first, and the IOL here is gonna be a three-piece uh, monofocal acrylic IOL, hydrophobic acrylic, with a six millimeter optic. And that's why it was so critical for us to have that five millimeter axis. Now for our cohesive viscoelastic, look where I'm putting it just under the iris, just to open up that sulcus area. We don't want to just try to fill the center of the eye because with an open posterior capsule in this unicameral eye, it the viscoelastic would just fall back. Here comes our eye well. It's been loaded up into our injector. You can see how soft the globe is here because it's unicameral. There is no infusion line yet. And let's just deliver this three-piece eye well on top of the iris initially. Again, keeping in mind the orientation, first haptic should come out like the number seven. That looks great. Slowly unfold. Make sure the IOL optic goes in straight. Again, the overall haptic should look like an anti-S, not like the letter S. And then we'll get the lens, and we'll just use our chopper here to dial it into the sulcus. So dialing that in, and we can get both haptics into the sulcus. And what we'll do next is we're going to optic capture it. So here we go, getting those bubbles out of the eye just to make our video better. 
make the view cleaner for the surgeon, for me. And now we can use that chopper and let's dial in that haptic in the sulcus. That looks great. Bring the lens around and let's repeat the process. Now we'll have the entire lens in the sulcus. And then once we're happy with that positioning, let's get the optic and put it underneath the rexus. So the rexus went from that round shape to this more ovoid or diamond shaped. And we have again, the optic is captured behind the rexus and the haptics are in the sulcus. That's a very secure position. Gonna suture up the main incision, do this in fast uh, forward at high speed just to get through it. Important to suture this up because now we're gonna have the pars play in the vitrectomy. And then we'll clean up also that little bit of posterior capsule there to make it a little bit prettier behind the optic. So that's all done. Now it comes time for my retina colleague. And so my retina colleague is gonna go ahead and place in his infusion line and place in another trocar. And he's cutting the conjunctiva open and just being prepared in case he needs to place that larger gauge phragmatome in order to break up the lens. So he's done a little cautery there and making an opening, clean that up. There's the go. Stop, get some hemostasis there. And we'll do this, of course, in high speed. Entering with the MVR blade. And let's take a look, see what we got. Yeah. There's our lens material, you can see. It's floating right there on, uh, on the retina. And very carefully, he's going to remove all that lens material. Now, I don't do pars plane of vitrectomy surgeries like this. I think we're much better off sending it to our vitro-retinal colleagues who have a high degree of expertise here. I know in other countries, some cataract surgeons do parts plane of vitrectomies as well. In my area of Los Angeles, it's far more common for cataract specialists like me to stick with cataracts and anterior segment surgery and then work as a team with a dedicated retina person. So cleaning up everything nicely here, shaving off any remaining vitreous that may have been left from the initial surgery, especially the vitreous base and where the, the uh, lens was. And that looks really clean. This patient's going to have a beautiful outcome. You can see there a lot of the laser that was done in the side of the prior detachment. And this patient has a nice stable result. Again, had a prior combined scleral buckle and parts of vitrectomy. And now looking at the eye here, looks good. Just going to go once with the uh, vitreous cutter, vitrectomy cutter, and go behind the eye well and just kind of clean up that posterior capsule. Remember, eye well optic is captured behind the anterior capsule rexus. And so this little, these fragments of posterior caps are just really not needed and we don't want them to float in the way. We're going to suture up the incisions here, especially this larger one. The other ones aren't so uh, big and those can be just closed on their own. Looks very good. Check the pressure at the end. And the case is essentially over. This patient had a beautiful outcome. If you like the video, I want to encourage you to check out cataractcoach.com. That's our free teaching website. And we also send out a free email every morning with a brand new case like this one with a full write-up, pictures, and of course this video. So if you're my YouTube fan, I also encourage you to check out cataractcoach.com and sign up for that email. Thanks for watching.